The Yemeni Houthis arsenal used against Western coalition ships and vessels has shocked the Pentagon. U.S. Deputy Secretary of Defense for Acquisition and Sustainment Bill Laplante said Axios reports a Pentagon representative was very surprised by the presence of modern cruise and ballistic anti-ship missiles in the arsenal of the guys in slippers missiles. According to him, these missiles can do amazing things by hitting ships and vessels in the Red Sea. Laplante also noted that modern weapons had appeared in the Ansar Allah movement in the last six months, and this makes the Houthis scary. I am an engineer and a physicist, and I have dealt with missiles my entire career. What I have seen the Houthis do in the last six months is something that has simply shocked me, the deputy minister said. According to the publication, the US is particularly concerned about the Houthis' anti-ship missiles with impressive characteristics. The Americans assume that Iran, which has long-standing ties with the Ansar Allah movement, supplies the missiles to the Houthis. The presence of such missiles in the Houthis' arsenal is a potential threat to all ships and vessels in the Red Sea without exception. The publication does not report how the coalition intends to combat this. Recall that this week, the Houthis announced an attack on a US aircraft carrier and two destroyers with cruise and ballistic missiles, as well as drones. The US Navy confirmed the attack on the destroyers, but said all missiles were shot down. Recently, Yemen's Houthis attacked two US destroyers with at least eight one-way attack drones, five anti-ship ballistic missiles, and three anti-ship cruise missiles, the Pentagon said. Pentagon Press Secretary Major General Pat Ryder said in a press briefing that the US military successfully downed them all. Ryder also rejected the Houthi claim that they also targeted the US aircraft carrier in the Red Sea, the USS Abraham Lincoln. No damage was recorded to the vessels and no US personnel were hurt, Ryder added. The Houthis, a Yemeni group that Biden removed from the terror blacklist only to redesignate them two years later, are the same group that has been recklessly firing at commercial and military vessels transiting international waters in and around the Red Sea, Gulf of Aden, and Indian Ocean. Last month, bombers from the US conducted multiple airstrikes on several underground Houthi weapons storage facilities inside Yemen. Pentagon chief Lloyd Austin said that US Air Force B-2 bombers conducted precision strikes against five hardened underground weapons storage locations in Houthi-controlled areas of Yemen. President Joe Biden on Friday praised the cooperation between South Korea, Japan, and the U.S. at countering what he described as North Korea's dangerous and destabilizing cooperation with Russia. Biden spoke at the start of a meeting in Peru with South Korean President Yoon suk Yeol and Japanese Prime Minister Shigeru Ishiba on the sidelines of the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit. The talks came amid heightened concerns about North Korea's growing military partnership with Russia and Pyongyang's stepped-up cadence of ballistic missile tests. Biden celebrated the partnership between Japan and South Korea, two countries that have historical enmity but under Biden's presidency are now tightening security and economic ties as their corner of the world becomes more complicated. Biden noted that it would be his last meeting with them but that the trilateral partnership should be preserved for years to come. I'm proud of how far we've come, Biden said. Whatever the issue, we've taken it on together. The meeting comes as North Korea has deployed thousands of troops to Russia to help Moscow try to claw back land in the Kursk border region that Ukraine seized earlier this year. As we can see from the recent deployment of DPRK troops to Russia, the challenging security environment within and outside the region once again reminds us the importance of our trilateral cooperation, Yoon said using the initials for North Korea's formal name and speaking through a translator. Ishiba also emphasized the importance of the three nations acting as a bulwark against North Korea and pointed to recent military exercises between the three nations as a sign of cooperation. A three-day exercise in June was geared toward improving joint ballistic missile defense, anti-submarine warfare, surveillance, and other skills and capabilities and to help the three countries improve their ability to share missile warnings, increasingly important as North Korea tests ever more sophisticated systems. I look forward to furthering our partnership in response against North Korea and in many other areas, Ishiba said through a translator.
North Korean leader Kim Jong-un ordered a series of ballistic missile tests in the lead-up to this month's U.S. election and is claiming progress on efforts to build capability to strike the U.S. mainland. Well, Mr. President, Mr. Prime Minister, welcome. It's good to be with all of you again. It's a great group. Fifteen months ago, we held the first ever leader-level summit of our three countries at Camp David back in the United States. And it inaugurated a whole new era of cooperation between our, among our three countries. It was part of a much larger effort these past four years to bring together America's specific allies. And I'm proud. I'm proud of how far we've come since that historic meeting, promoting development in Southeast Asia and in the Pacific Islands, linking arms to secure the technologies of the future and countering North Korea's dangerous and destabilizing cooperation with Russia. Whether, whatever the issue, we're taking it on together. And I think it's, it makes a big difference for peace and security. We've now reached a moment of significant political change. And I congratulate the Prime Minister for uh, his taking office. And uh, this is likely to be my last trilateral meeting with this important group. But I'm proud to have helped be one of the parts of building this uh, this partnership. And I think it's built to last. That's my hope and expectation. I truly believe cooperation of our countries will be the foundation to peace and stability in the Indo-Pacific for many years to come if we stay together. And I believe that. So I look forward to our discussion. And Mr. President, I now turn it over to you. Today's meeting demonstrates the three countries' strong commitment to developing our trilateral cooperation continuously. In the midst of complex global crisis, cooperation between the ROK, the US, and Japan not only coincides with the national interest of all three countries, but is also essential for peace and prosperity in the Indo-Pacific region. As we can see from the recent deployment of DPRK troops to Russia, the challenging security environment within and outside the region once again reminds us the importance of our trilateral cooperation. Since the Camp David Leader Summit last year, led by President Biden, our trilateral cooperation has become and is becoming stronger every day. We are accumulating our experiences of a trilateral cooperation fast, which is leading to tangible results. The trilateral cooperation now goes beyond the security as it has developed into comprehensive and institutional cooperation that encompasses economy, advanced technologies such as AI and quantum technology, as well as exchange between future generations. The trilateral secretariat that will be launched as a result of today's meeting will be a strong foundation that will lead to even greater cooperation among our three nations. この日は極めて厳しいものであります。いうことは極めて Thank you, Press. Thank you, Press. Mr. President, Mr. President, one more to President, what concerns are you hearing from leaders about the incoming administration? Mr. President, any concern about